Uh, but there's also lots of stuff with reviews of the games. You probably want to read those a lot Good more. Night. Is the 360 just too expensive? Tonight we talked to Microsoft executive Peter Moore to find out why they'll be releasing two different versions of their next-gen console. And fashion designer Mark Echo will be with us to discuss his new game, Getting Up, and the political controversy that it sparked. And EA producer Amir Jami is here to talk about Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth 2 because G4 TV, the show that's a tough hobbit to break, starts now. <laughs> well, you're good with those one liners. <laughs> Love her, yes. Crazy weekend yeah. gaming. Crazy weekend gaming. Yes. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to G4 TV, your one stop shopping source for all of your gaming needs. Now, Tina and Jeff, a lot of news going on in the gaming industry yeah. this week. The summer's supposed to be quiet I for know. games. It's and there's thank, all this buzz. Thank God it's yeah. not. Thank yeah. God it's nice because I'm sure everybody's heard Microsoft is coming out with two different versions of their next gen system. They've got the core version for $299. Yeah, not, not a bad price Basic. for a right. video game system. And then they're also going to introduce the full the premium version with some extra features like a hard drive. For $3,000. No, 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 no. <laughs> wireless controller for $399. Anyway, it's causing quite a stir and everybody's talking about it. So what we've done is we've gone and asked ex my Xbox executive Peter Moore to join us on the phone and answer some of our questions and figure out what's this all about. So, Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. G4TV.com. It's always been a dream of mine to be on this. <laughs> Thanks, hey, Laura, Peter. Tina, Jeff. How are you doing, guys? We're oh, good. Thanks good. for coming on, We Peter. figured it was a really slow week for you. Right. So Nothing it's going to on bring here in on. Redmond. But, no. but Peter, is, uh, he's willing to face the fans <laughs> and the right. controversy he, and the developers. He's right? nice now. We'll see how this goes after the interview. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Peter, one of the things we wanted to do was talk to some developers and how, how this is going to affect the way they do games and you know how they're creating games in the future for these two systems. So we went out and talked to some of them. We're going to roll some tape and afterwards give you a chance to respond. Ready? Okay, great. Let's do it. Nope. My initial reaction, actually, as a, as a consumer as well as a developer, was a little bit of disappointment. Um, I'll, and I, the main reason is because they're offering one console without a hard drive. You were pretty much well set thinking it was just going to be one product, one price, and, and coming out with a different price arguably with less features is, is pretty surprising. Not too sure who the market is for that, but that's an interesting strategy. I think most, most gamers will probably buy the core system, you know, because I think that a lot of gamers are, you know, going to be money conscious. And keep in mind, it's 299 but no one's going to let you buy for 299 All right, Peter, well, that's what the developers <laughs> are saying. Now, obviously, there's wow. some mixed opinions out there. Now, people are talking about, you know, this idea of they might have to compromise their games in order to put them on these two systems. What is your response to what people are saying? You know what, Jeff? I think Lyle actually said it best there. It, it, it is all about the system memory. We made a decision a while back to build in 512 megabytes of system memory. And he made the point there, I think, very clearly that that's what developers are looking for. And they're looking for the game to stream out of that system memory, not to put stuff on the hard drive. So that was a decision we made. Um, on top of that, a DVD, the ability to stream data faster off the DVD. We've now got a DVD drive that's that's over two times faster than the one on the Xbox. So you're saying the hard drive is sort of less essential to the Xbox 360 than it was to the original Xbox? Because back then, I mean, a lot of people were saying yeah. you guys were really pushing the hard drive. This is, you know, this is a big differentiator. The developers have been aware of this situation for a long time, Jeff. Right. And so the ability for our team to work with them in a far more, quite frankly, robust architecture of a console than even the Xbox was has been critical. We made a very conscious and very expensive decision to include 512 megabytes of system memory, and that's been the big deal. Bottom line here, I think, is that gamers are just going to have to wait to see over the next few weeks as we start showing these games, whether it's going to be a Tokyo game show uh, the middle of next month and then, of course, of XO5 in October in Amsterdam. Uh, the proof of the pudding, as I always like to say, is in the tasting. And you're gonna, <laughs> you are going to see games. I personally played both Perfect Dark Zero last night and Cameo, which I've been playing, as you know, Jeff, for a long time. Right. <laughs> the games are spectacular. They are rock solid. They're visually beautiful. And it is transparent to the gamer as regards whether there's utilization of a hard drive or not. So I, I, I'd say the gamers out there that are concerned about this, just wait and see. Because really is going to be the game experience that will make the difference. The developers are all aware of it. Um, I'm also seeing third-party games in the last week or so from uh, Activision, from Ubisoft, from Electronic Arts, uh, from Tecmo. That just looks spectacular. All right, and Peter. I'm not hearing the same commentary from these guys than some of the that I did from some of the developers there that are somewhat naysayers. Okay, well, you know, Peter, <laughs> another part of the reason why people are upset is that you suggested all year that there would be one system that comes standard with a hard drive and a wireless controller, but now not so much. So why did you make that change? At E3, we announced the Xbox 360, and that is exactly what we're still doing. 
the Xbox 360 core system, as then, of course, there's been a later announcement that, quite frankly, is based upon growing our install base on a global basis. We, we look at it, and somebody again made the point, uh, and I couldn't quite see who it was, uh, that um, this will allow a price point that allows us to grow our install base. Right. You know, guys, we talked at E3 a lot about growing the industry, and price point is very important. Peter, we, do you feel like you're alienating the hardcore gamers and, and really kind of going for the mainstream money? Not but at all. Not at all. Because that, that's that, what everyone's saying. They're in an uproar <laughs> about it, saying, you know, you forget about all the people that really, like, stood by the original Xbox with the hard drive. You bring out these two systems. It's a little bit more mainstream. People are a little bit fired up about that. Well, you know what? I, I look at the boards as much as you guys do, and I can tell you that, and I've looked at thousands of posts, probably more than I should do to allow me to sleep at night. <laughs> and the ability for you to get what you get at $399 for that, this incredible you know, 20 gigs of hard drive, wireless headset, DVD remote control, HD AV pack. You rolled it all together, right. and it's, it's an incredible experience for $399. Somebody was telling me today, for the, for the graphic capability, the console would cost you 1000 bucks to go to Best Buy right. and buy a GeForce video card. I mean, it's, it is tremendous value. Um, the other thing I will say as well is that uh, the pre-order activity in the last 24 to 48 hours from our U.S. retailers and then I spoke with some European retailers in the last couple of days, has been huge. And now, it is now, skewing Peter, sorry, heavily interrupt. towards the premium skew. On the pre-orders, are you seeing more for the core system or more for $299 or $399? Premium skew. So, so Peter, I want to ask you about that. Because a lot of people have been asking, you know, what is the split going to be? Because some hardcore gamers are saying, you know, if I want the 399 system and I go to a store and they only have the 299 one, I'm going to have to buy that, and I'm going to have to spend $150 to buy the hard drive and a wireless controller on top of, top of that. So what is the split going to be between premium and core? I think it's, I, I couldn't give you the exact numbers, Jeff, because it's global, but I can tell you it's going to be very heavily towards the premium skew in the early going. Is that, um, I mean, people have said, you know, maybe 70, 30, 80, 20. Can you quantify it at all? I, I really can't because, you know, ask me that question in another couple of weeks when we see some data. I would be guessing. Right. Now, Peter, you mentioned that you were, uh, been playing Perfect Dark. Now, EB Games has put up a bundle for $700 and includes Perfect Dark Zero as sort of a day one launch. Now, there's been a lot of speculation if that's going to make day one. So if we see that in the bundle, can you guarantee that it's going to be a day one title? Uh, Jeff, this is a software business. There are no guarantees. You know, right. you, you know how that works. What I can tell you is I played Perfect Dark yesterday. Um, I actually was in co-op mode, which is just spectacular, and uh, played a number of levels. Uh, the game is rock solid. So your right confidence there. is increasing now that it's, gonna be, it's more, looking more and more likely to be there at, at launch? I would say certainly that uh, my expectations uh, versus last week continue to grow. I am very confident this game will be in that launch period. And, and you know, I like to talk about... What's the period mean? Means, means yeah, by the end of the Jeff, year? Jeff, you've asked me that question a hundred times over the last <laughs> month. Yeah. So what you're saying is Perfect Dark Zero is guaranteed to launch. <laughs> you know, you guys can try all you like to put words in my mouth. No, and then you said Halo 3 will also oh, be in the bundle. That's great, fantastic news. Oh, that's news. fabulous, yeah. Uh, i better get on that right now than if Halo 3 is going to be part no. of that. Oh, but actually, great. can I ask you about breaking. that really quick? Because I did make the announcement about the movie coming out in yeah. 2007. When are we going to see Halo Halo 3. Are we going to see it with we the release? We made a movie announcement. We didn't make a I mean, game I'm sorry. I meant the movie announcement, yes. They yeah, usually game do announcement, go... game announce, the, the game announcement will be at a later date to be determined. Right now, we're very excited to be able to partner with Universal and Fox. We don't even know what that date is. The movie business is as um, fluid as the game business as regards dates, but uh, we're, we're very, very pumped to be right. able to bring uh, Halo to the silver screen. All right. Well, thank you, Peter, very thank much you, for Peter. your time. All right. Up next, we're talking to fashion guru Mark Echo about the recent attacks against him and his upcoming video game, Getting Up. So stay with us. Hey, Scott Rubin, host of G4TV.com. Remembering what I feel when I see the old episodes. It'd have to be, what? up with the hair. Every time I look at it, I'm like, what, what are you thinking, dude? What the hell? On August 29th... It's the end of the world. I'll take it from here. The end begins... Back off. ...with a bang. From the guys who brought you Epic Movie and Meet the Spartans. Amy Winehouse? Disaster Movie. They did PG-13, August 29th. You've never done this before, right? No. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you trust me? It's going all right. It's going all right. More insane by a minute. New germ killing eclipse gun. Everyone there? Hello. We're here. Following along here on page. Seriously. 
Now, Eclipse has a natural ingredient that kills the germs that cause bad breath. Advanced fresh breath. Seriously. A J.G. Wentworth success story. Felicia and the annuity. A few years ago, I inherited an annuity from my grandfather. I started receiving monthly payments from his insurance company. Then everything seemed to happen at once. Felicia's employer moved to another state, and she was left unemployed. Your money starts to go pretty fast when there's no cash coming in. J.G. Wentworth knows that a big change in life circumstances can change how you look at your annuity. I heard about J.G. Wentworth through TV ads. If you have an annuity that is no longer serving your needs and you need cash now, call J.G. Wentworth. You'll get a free appraisal and have all your questions answered. Don't wait. The sooner you call, the faster you'll have your money. Call now. J.G. Wentworth helped me and they made it really easy. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call 866-433-9717. 866-433-9717. Thinking about LASIK? See what LASIK Plus can do for you. With LASIK Plus, you're choosing the nation's leading LASIK provider. And now, LASIK Plus makes it easy for you to have LASIK today with no money down and no interest till 2010. I chose LASIK Plus because the numbers made sense. Call now to speak to a LASIK professional and schedule a free, no risk, no obligation LASIK vision exam with one of our doctors and find out if you're a candidate for LASIK. I chose LASIK Plus because my first exam was so thorough, I knew I was in good hands. Hundreds of thousands of people love the great results and personalized care they get with LASIK Plus. I chose LASIK Plus because they have a great track record for getting the best results. I just wish I would have done it sooner. Call LASIK Plus to get LASIK today with no money down and no interest till 2010. This offer won't last, so call the number on your screen now. It's time to see what LASIK Plus can do for you. Don't wait. Call now. So, where do you think this guy should be? I'd say this way. And let's make sure that sound effect we used in the last level fits in here, too. This one? Yeah! You know, I'm so glad I got into game design. It's cool to be able to create the kind of games that we play. I know what you mean. And the training at Collins College takes less time than most people might think. Can you believe we get paid to do this? For a complimentary DVD, call 888-823-0999. Operators are standing by. That's 888-823-0999. Call now. There's one show out there that keeps coming up. Pearl. Uh, it's good, unclean fun. Eat it! Eat it! The greatest gag reflex competition ever mounted. Don't puke, brother! Don't puke, get more! It's gastronomic molestation. It will bring about the imminent destruction of the human race. Ah! Reality TV that's turning heads and stomachs. <laughs> Pearl. All new Sunday at 7, only on G4. You're plugged into G4 Rewind. Game developers, if you're making a game for next generation, please make it good. With games starting out at $70 a pop, we can't afford to be buying crappy games for next generation. What is up with the Xbox 360 pricing? Come on, I sat there and priced it out. It's gonna cost me $700 if I want a memory card, an extra controller, just to get on and play some games. I mean, that is a lot of money. <laughs> Oprah's oh, giving away a car with every Xbox. The, Peter so Moore, no is like, we have the developers being negative, we have the fans being negative. Boy, it's I tell like, you, what a tough. show. He's right, welcome developer. back to the show that brings the controversy straight into your living rooms. Now, fashion designer Mark Echo loves attention, but this week he may have gotten a bit more than he expected. He had scheduled a release party for his new game about the world of tagging, getting up. And at the last minute, believe it or not, New York Mayor Mike, Michael Bloomberg revoked his party permit because the mayor's office said the game promoted vandalism. Well, last night, Mark ended up getting to have his party, and we've got him live from New York right now to tell us about the controversy. How you doing, Mark? I'm chilling. I'm good. Nice. Good to be here. What's up? Good. We appreciate Hi. it. First of all, let's go right into it. Now, tell us about the, you know, how do you feel about the, ho the hostility that came from the Bloomberg administration? Oh, it was one of those things. I could have never hired a better PR firm than uh, Bloomberg Media Service. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, I don't know that he intended to, to give us as much attention as we managed to get. You know, we planned this event uh, well over a year ago, and uh, not knowing what the date would be on the release of the game, it was something that was just kind of, kind of, was intended to coincide. And um, when we went for all of our permits, they, you know, everything was cool. The 10th precinct, you know, the cops here in New York were, were down with this. 
long story short, uh, they ended up uh, revoking the permit despite us having it in our hand. And uh, we fought. We fought the city, and I filed the suit against Mayor Bloomberg uh, on First Amendment rights to, to paint uh, what we wanted to paint and what we deemed as art, and he, what he saw as us inciting vandalism, and we won. Mark, now I'm a big fan of your clothes, and I hope that you're not leaving that behind, but what made you decide to make a game about graffiti lifestyle? Well, graffiti is one of those things that just informs so much of what I've done as, some, as a creative person. Uh, in fifth grade, you know, I must have been, I don't know, 10 years old. I don't know how old you are in fifth grade here. Uh, but uh, I got a book. I remember getting a book from my father called Subway Art um, by Henry Chaffant, the photographer Henry Chaffant. It was at a time in my life where, you know, it became, a, graffiti became an invitation to hip hop for me. I, I grew up in a town that was a, a very diverse, eclectic community, a large black and Latino population. And uh, as a white kid fitting in, I was definitely not going to rap, and I was too fat to break dance, so graffiti <laughs> was my thing. But you love the graffiti, Mark, and what's interesting about, you know, the game industry, though, is that there's all this talk about, you know, games with killing and violence in them and stuff like that, lots of controversy about those. But now a game like Getting Out, which is about something, you know, like graffiti and tagging, is getting so much negative attention. Why do you think this game is getting negative attention instead of some of the other games, which are even worse? Well, you know, if this was a film... If Getting Up was intended to be, if it was a film that I was releasing, yeah. or a television series, or a Broadway play, uh, there, there wouldn't even be a blip on the radar. Right. Uh, I think it, again, has to do with the mainstream media's lack of understanding of the medium. You know, as a gamer, you know, you, yes, you can do pretty violent and aggressive things. Uh, and I guess it's the thought process that because you are controlling it interactively, that you are in control, that you somehow are existentially committing the crime. Yeah. And it's, you know, watching a film, you're a voyeur. You know, you sit there, we go to a movie together, 200, 300 of us all in a room in a theater, and, you know, it's a much more of a group thing, but we're, we're voyeurs to that crime. So it's more like it's at an arm's length, it's okay. Mm. Um, you know, I just, I think it's just a generational, like yeah. I said, generational lack you're, of understanding. You're part of the video game generation, which is great. And I actually saw you speak at DICE earlier this year. You, you gave this speech entitled, yeah. What Killed Jabba the Hutt? And then you says, had right. some pretty harsh things to say, actually, about the game industry, which I think you respect a lot. But did you feel yeah. it was sort of premature for, you know, with your first game not even being released to be out there criticizing the industry? No, no. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm that guy, you know... I love the I love video gaming. I love I love games, uh, and I'm I consider myself a, a gamer. And I, I don't think I was being critical. I was being I think I was more of an advocacy stance, and more of kind of like, hey guys, let's wake up. You know, the sweet spot for where the audience is in order to kind of hold you know hold the hold down the next generation of consoles has to be a wider net than currently we're speaking to but isn't the you know, view sir that you have to you know you the hardcore has to respect and love your game before you can even get to the mainstream i do, i do believe that right i okay. do believe that and, and and i also think that me trying to be in front of dice was let people see that i have an opinion yeah you know i think one of the things the beautiful thing about you know uh the, the, the game world is everybody has got an opinion, and gamers have strong opinions. Yeah, they and not do. everyone's going to agree with me, and not everyone's going to agree with me. At and, least you uh, have a point of view. I, yeah, I have a point of view, and I, I'm not just some guy that's taking my logo and glomming on to uh, another business opportunity. I'm in love with the medium. Uh, it's something I'm very emotionally uh, close to, I'm very passionate about. Mark, you just mentioned your logo. Let me ask you now, a big part of the game is putting some pain on fictitious advertisers by tagging over their ads. Now, as a guy who puts the word echo on everything he touches, <laughs> can you really make fun of other people's ad campaigns? You know, I approached this, and I, when I wrote the story, it was written from a very cinematic point of view. And, you know, I wanted to, there to be kind of some jokes in it, and like insidery stuff and commentary on uh, just consumption. Right. So I thought it was, I just thought it was a, a, a cool idea and I can make fun of myself. I'm not beneath that. <laughs> you and Lauren Lennon. Well, I think we're going to see Mark Echo the reality show coming very soon Absolutely. for some reason. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I won't do reality We want to see shows. what goes on behind cl closed doors over there for sure. Thank you so much for being on, Mark. We Thanks, appreciate Mark. it. Thank, Thank you. Luck with the game. Peace, guys. All it's right. IG4. Thanks for having appreciate me. Appreciate it. All right, Proto Man finally got rid of the ring, but he's not finished making video games. We're talking to one of the heroes behind Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth two when we come back and I heard Mark Echo really loves real time strategy. You're plugged into G4 Rewind up next G4TV.com. I think what it is is that you don't know it until you have it.
because I heard that in the past. You always hear these people being like, oh, well, she's not right for you. You'll know, you'll know. And I'm like, okay, yeah, well, you'll we know. know. <laughs> well, this yeah. is what they were talking about. When I first heard him on the phone, I thought he was really sexy. <laughs> I love this girl to death, you know, and Amory changed my life because I was going in a hundred different directions. It is easy to be with Lee. It's easy to love him. She is extremely happy, lighthearted, doesn't let things get to her, you know? And I learned from that, and I'm jealous of that, but she's bringing that into my life. I'm much more laid back and kind of go with the flow. Me, not so, so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amory allows me to be who I am. I mean, as long as I have her, that's it. See how it feels to be matched based on compatibility. Log on and review your matches for free. eHarmony.com This summer, the untold chapter of the Star Wars saga is revealed. They have nowhere to run. Where is Skywalker? Star Wars. The Clone Wars. Rated PG. Now playing in theaters. This is you after an energy drink. Unfortunately, so is this. Why do energy drinks make you crash? One minute you're wired up, the next you feel worse than before. The answer is large amounts of sugar and caffeine. That's why you should try a new liquid energy shot called 5-Hour Energy. With 5-Hour Energy, you can leave grogginess behind and sail through your day without feeling jittery, tense, or, you know. That's because 5-Hour Energy contains a powerful blend of B vitamins for energy and amino acids for focus, alertness, and better mood. There's zero sugar, about as much caffeine as a cup of coffee, and only 4 calories. The 2-ounce shot takes just seconds to drink, and in minutes you're feeling bright, awake, and productive. And that feeling lasts for hours. So if your energy drink makes you crash, switch to 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Find out if 5-Hour Energy is right for you. It's available at these fine stores. Or for more information, go to 5-HourEnergy.com. Ah oh yes, the Geico Gecko in migration. Driven by primal instinct to help people save hundreds of dollars on their car insurance. Hey, do you see that guy over there? He's giving me the eebie-jeebies. Gotta be kidding me. <laughs> what a clever creature. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? Be your own boss, set your own hours, and make great money. It's not as crazy as it sounds. Last year, I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home, working part-time. We gave up our jobs. People thought we were crazy. <laughs> and we took in over a quarter of a million dollars in our first year. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. There are thousands of opportunities for you, full or part-time. Live the lifestyle you've been dreaming of. The secret is in this success kit. To get yours, log on now. Next year, my goal is a half million dollars. I made $5,000 yesterday. We've made enough to spend winter in Hawaii. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now to get your success kit. Now there's a different way to get lost. Introducing Lost in 2.0, enhanced with on-screen facts and commentary. Lost in 2.0 starts September 15th on G4. Peter Jackson may have put Lord of the Rings to rest, but the folks at EA are certainly can't get enough of those hobbits. In early 2006, EA is going to release the real-time strategy game Battle for Middle-Earth 2 for the PC. And joining us today to give us an exclusive sneak peek at the game is one of the game's producers, Amir Ajami. Amir, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, Glad Amir. to be here. Hi. That's right. Hello, ladies. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Now, Amir, Battle for Middle-earth, great game. You guys are coming back with the next one. But what I gotta ask you is, you know, the Battle for Middle-earth sort of covered the entire War of the Rings. So I'm wondering, you know, what is left to cover in this, this sequel? So that's kind of true. Battle for Middle-earth 1 did cover the entire War of the Rings as it was portrayed in the movies. 
but we've secured the book rights now. And the books really talk about these gigantic battles in the north part of Middle Earth that really weren't depicted in the films. So you're kind of creating new creatures and stuff that we didn't see in the film? Exactly. So we've got giants, dragons. Dragons were never portrayed in the films, and you know, th that's, those are creatures that we're very excited about. I'm actually kind of fun to sort of take, you know, sort of Peter Jackson's look and feel of his film and sort of create new creatures. I mean, it's going to still sort of look and feel like the film, right? right? The, the, we're, we're maintaining the look that John Howe and Alan Lee kind of uh, created for the film, but we're, we're marrying it to the, to the book rights as well. So you guys doing lots of Lord of the Rings games. Is you ever going to sort of run out of these? Are we going to see the, the Lord of the Rings, you know, DDR? Or like, what's, what's coming <laughs> You probably won't see DDR, yeah. but you know what? Lord of the Rings is, is the, the archetypical fantasy license, right? It's been around for 50 years. It's older than D&D. It's older than Star Wars. It'll probably be around for another 50 years. So there's a lot, a lot of content there. And there's a lot to pull out of it. Well, it's good you guys are still in RTS games, because there seem to be fewer and fewer coming out of the PC, but <laughs> yes. you guys are, are pros at that. Now, Tina Laura, you guys have been looking into the game. Sounds exciting, right? Yeah, absolutely. But I ask you, because, you, you know, the movie, there's no visual association like there is the movie. Creatively, is it more creative to, to pull from the book than it is to pull from the movie? It is. We, we kind of, you, you know, we, we can't create our, our, our own units from scratch, but we, we kind of do get to pull and choose from, from the gaps that really didn't go into detail in the books. Because we only know what Frodo looks like because he looks like Elijah Wood. Right. But if he didn't exist, you could create any Frodo that you wanted to. Right. But, you know, Frodo is going to look like Elijah Wood. <laughs> right. and, and so you know, the movie set the style, and, and we're kind of carrying that through in the screen as well. Right on. Now, people, cool. so people posted to the message boards, and one of the things a couple of people asked are what criticisms from the first game are you going to address as you develop Ooh. the sequel? Yeah. So one of the biggest criticisms we got was the fact that in the first game, we forced you to build structures in certain locations. We yes. called that the build plot system. So we're kind of going back to traditional RTSs and letting you build anywhere you want. That's, that's the biggest feature. Well, the game looks good. Can't wait to play it. Thanks, Thanks, Samir. Very much. Thanks, Thanks, Samir. Thanks, Samir. And you at home, keep your hands right where they are because after this, it's going to get hot in here when Teen and Jeff fight over handhelds. I see you. I see you. The fight begins. What side are you on? Go get them, guys. Here, here, here. Next week, your worst nightmares meet a highly anticipated first person shooter. When we take a closer look at Fear. We're going to ask the game's executive producer, Chris Miller, why this one is destined to scare the crap out of us. Whoa. You, know, you scare yeah. me. Zombie. So scary. Daily basis. All right, guys, now every now and then, an argument within the gaming community is so compelling and so filled with passion and so really annoying that the only way to finally put it to rest is to make a battle right here in a G4TV.com Play More, presented by Foot Locker. Hence my <laughs> stylish <laughs> outfit. Show right. me some shoes for you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, now that's scary. a respectable career. Now listen, today <laughs> Tina and Jeff are getting to the bottom of the handheld war. The question is simple. Who's winning the battle? The DS or the PSP? You mean Jeff the answer is simple. is going to take the side of the PSP Absolutely. and Dina the DS. It's a fair battle. No hitting below the belt. Are you All right. ready? All right, Jeff, start us off. What's your opening comments? All right, my opening comments is that the PSP, this is an aspirational device. This shows the future of handheld video games, takes it to the next level. The problem with the DS is that there are some innovative games on it, but you buy a DS, it's at a Faustian bargain. You get a couple interesting, innovative games now. Longer term, there's just no exciting games. There's no momentum for the device. Thank I challenge you, you to name four <laughs> DS you. games that are coming out this fall that you're looking forward to. Trauma Tina? Center, Lost in Blue, Electroplankton, and Castlevania. Innovation, innovation. Not this fall. Inno Not this innovation, fall. innovation. Talk about progression. You got dual screen, mm. you got the touch. Take something like Nintendogs, where all the DS's flew off the shelves thanks to right. one game. Take the Xbox and Halo. Sometimes it takes one game. It is about quality, not quantity. You think, Thank you, Tina. Good point. You think hardcore gamers are really going to I mean, buy a DS for Nintendogs? I think it's going to help expand the market, absolutely. But the problem is the DS, there's just no momentum for software going forward. And a couple of the games are innovative. But, I mean, who would actually want to have a DS when you could have a PSP? And it's, it's so aspirational, so inventive. Look at the quality of the graphics in the games. Thank you, Jeff. All right, we're not talking technical, but if you want to talk about quantity, well, more people own a DS. So obviously more people would... Because that's totally oh, unfair. Oh, excuse me. That's, can I, can I, I respond I, to that? Out of order. Out of order. I Let her finish her statement. Regardless of whenever it came out, people have had plenty of time to <laughs> rush to the store shelves and buy a DS or the PSP. And today, if you count them, there are more individuals walking around the planet that we live in that own a DS. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Jeff? Totally unfair because the PSP came out later, didn't have the holiday season. By this time next year, I guarantee you the PSP will sell more. That's a good point. That's more. a good point, but it doesn't matter about you guys. We put it up to you and the board to decide who's the winner right here in the big fight, the DS or the PSP. Well, so they get to decide who wins. They get to decide. I don't even decide. <laughs> I, I don't even rule my own court. The winner is 
a whopping 75% of you think the DS is winning Jeff, the battle. Thank you for visiting. Thank That's you for tough. visiting. Thank you for playing. You guys both did good see. jobs. Go for the PSP. Yes. I love the PSP. All right, big <laughs> thanks to our guests, Peter Moore, Mark Echo, and Amir Ajami. We're going to be back next week bringing you the inside scoop on what really matters in gamers' lives. Did you, you make me right. bring yes. out the Picto Chat card? I, I never want to see you using a PSP then, Tina. Yeah. You know, the Picto Chat is like something you never